Hello there, I am Joshua Messick, and if you are new to this channel, I play the hammer dulcimer and share my compositions and my journey with the instrument. And in this video, I would like to tell you about a recent tour that I took to Japan for 21 days. So why Japan? Well, if you've been following this channel for a little while, you will have learned that I was the featured instrumentalist on the Japanese animated film Mary in the Witch's Flower by Studio Ponoc, which is the continuation or the successor of Studio Ghibli. And since then, I've built a relationship with Ponoc and many of the dulcimer players throughout Japan, and I wanted to go and play some concerts and say hey to everybody and also meet a bunch of new people. So I'd scheduled about a 10-day tour alongside my friend and cellist Ryan Knott, and we were all ready to go and made all our preparations and had our tickets when I got a phone call from the Community Arts of Tokyo. And they had asked me to be the featured presenter at their yearly conference, which was 10 days before the tour that I'd already scheduled. I said, well, I'd love to do it, but I don't want to sit in a hotel room for 10 days. Can you put me to work? They said, well, sure. So they scheduled some concerts for me at some churches and community centers. And I spent the first 10 days in Japan as a soloist before uh, Ryan showed up and I played more as a duo and a trio, but more about that later. So first off, let's talk about uh, my first 10 days of the tour, roughly. I arrived in with jet lag, <laughs> played at the Community Arts of Tokyo. Uh, and I played music from the soundtrack, Mary and the Witch's Flower, and then also some of my own original music. And I was able to collaborate with magnificent uh, musicians on cello, violin, viola, piano, and percussion. Great experience. Uh, just wonderful to be able to play the soundtrack music again after really having played much of it for about two years. It was awesome. So I also, the next day, played at a church. Uh, here I am with cellist Joseph playing How Deep the Father's Love on Father's Day. Uh, this was a very special experience for, for both of us. So then I got a little bit of sleep, not much, <laughs> and traveled to Chiba. And in Chiba, I played at a community center. And here you can see uh, a lot of people showed up. Now keep in mind, for many of these folks, this is the first time that they'd ever heard or seen a hammer dulcimer before. You would think that the hammer dulcimer would be part of Japanese culture in a major way, but the truth is it's a modern discovery for them, and there's only several hundred players in the entire country of Japan. So it's one of those instruments that is just perfect for Japanese music and culture, and they love it. But you can see, this is the first time that they'd seen it before. They, I offered after the concert for them to come up and try it and play it and ask me questions about the instrument. It was a great experience. That same day, uh, after the community center concert, I went over to a church to play a community concert hosted by the church. About half of these were members of the congregation. The other half were members of the community. And Great experience to see the excitement. Also, I got to meet Charlie and Yumiko. Uh, they've spent most of their adult lives in the United States, and uh, they said, Joshua, we'll take great care of you, and they sure did. They actually brought me over to their home and gave me an all-American breakfast of waffles and bacon and eggs and maple syrup. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> uh, the next day I played a concert at a different church, once again a community concert, and lots of people showed up. This was just a wonderful experience. So many of the people expressed that they, they loved it, and you can see the joy on their faces. Uh, just a wonderful time. After Chiba, I headed back to Tokyo where I had a small group uh, workshop discussion time where I got to present the hammer dulcimer and then also folks got to ask me questions about my life as an artist and about the hammer dulcimer and we also ate some really good food. <laughs> uh, after that I got yet again some sleep and then headed over to Nagoya and in Nagoya uh, I got to take a little bit of free time. You can see here I'm playing some video games uh, this is Smash Brothers, a uh, Nintendo game, which I am very, very bad at, but it was still fun to play. 
saw these flowers, got to walk the streets of Nagoya like a very hopeless tourist. Uh, it's good to be alive. <laughs> And also found the local Starbucks where I got to watch my Houston Astros play the New York Yankees. So here I am playing my concert in Nagoya. This was a great experience and actually several hammered dulcimer players showed up. It was great to meet them and hear them play and hear their excitement about the, the instrument. Uh, this photo here is one of my favorites. Uh, this elderly gentleman, you can just see uh, the radiance and the smile on his face. Uh, it was uh, a great experience and memory there. After the concert, the dulcimer players took me out to Yamachan, which is a Nagoya specialty restaurant for how they prepare the food and cook the chicken and all the different things. It was just awesome food, I can tell you that. I don't know what all was involved in making it, but it was incredible. So after that, I traveled back to Tokyo, the uh, area of Machida. Uh, where I met up with cellist Ryan Knott and his wife Sarah. You can see in this photo they'd literally uh, just gotten in after traveling for well over 24 hours. <laughs> they arrived at the hotel and we also met up with Mimi. Mimi is a professional hammer dulcimer player and she's an instructor. She has about 80 hammered dulcimer students. Uh, Mimi was our host, made sure that we had food and lodging and also took care of all of our logistics for us. She was uh, magnificent. She kept us alive. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mimi, uh, for all that you did. Mimi's also joined us at the concerts, uh, playing percussion and served as the translator. Uh, you can see here, I was playing. Here we are after the concert. Uh, enjoying uh, the celebration with lots of people here. The next day I got to meet up with my friend Jeff Wexler. Uh, Jeff is a producer with Studio Podoc and has also served uh, for many years as a producer with Studio Ghibli. Jeff does a lot of things. Uh, but one thing he's really, really, really passionate about is improving the quality of the dubs of Japanese animated films. If you'll watch Mary and the Witch's Flower, the dub, it's exceptional. And the reason that it's really good is because of this man right here, Jeff Wexler. Jeff, thank you so much. You're a good friend. It was wonderful to eat that breakfast and uh, cough, drink that coffee with you. Thank you so much. So, uh, after that meeting, that evening, I played a concert in Machida area again. Here I am with Mimi and Ryan. You can see uh, the joy and the excitement on people's faces. And that was our time in Machida. It's time to get a little bit of sleep again and then wake up the next morning and fly to Sapporo. And in Sapporo, we met up with Dr. Go Suzuki. You can see Go there to the right. Go is a hammer dulcimer player. He actually plays a dulciforte and just loves the instrument. And he's also a, a student of mine. I teach him lessons over the internet. Uh, and he is a magnificent player uh, and a wonderful host. Go booked all of our concerts and the workshop in Sapporo. Also took care of our lodging, made sure that we were okay. And uh, just been a great friend uh, to me and everybody. Thank you so much, Go. Now to the left in this picture, you will see Kenji. Kenji is a professional hammer dulcimer player and a pioneer in the country of Japan. He's been playing it in Japan for most of his adult life. And he, many people in Japan that play, play because of Kenji's influence. Kenji is a brilliant player, uh, has wonderful expression, total control of the instrument, and a lot of dynamics in his playing. Uh, I've enjoyed listening to his music for many years, and it was just an honor to meet him and very humbling to have his presence at my concert. Thank you, Kenji, uh, for your attendance. Here's some more photos. Now, I got to do a little bit of sightseeing in Sapporo. You can see here, this is actually the view from my bedroom window where I was staying. And at the house, there was a wonderful garden. You can see here some pictures of that garden. We also played a concert at Go's Clinic. He, once again, he's a medical doctor and this is his practice. Um, mostly elderly people that he serves. And you can see here they are 
attending the concert. I also got to play a duet with Go. Uh, that was a great experience. After that, we got to go have a barbecue, a Japanese barbecue. You can see here I'm fanning the flames of the charcoal fire with my Japanese fan. This guy here was a grill master. He cooked uh, most of the afternoon and evening and he could do anything with chopsticks. There he is flipping over a piece of salmon. I just love the look on this guy's face. Look at that smile. Uh, he was also a grill master. After the barbecue, here we are together. Most of these folks here are hammered dulcimer players or friends or family of dulcimer players. Here's another concert we played in Sapporo. Also, I taught a workshop there. Uh, you can see lots of hammered dulcimers in this photo here. It's a great experience. Got to play a duet uh, with Kenji and also uh, Mimi also joined for another song. All three of us got to play together. That was a great experience, getting to play with hammered dulcimer players in Japan. Also in Sapporo, I celebrated my 34th birthday. Uh, and as you can see here, we had a little birthday celebration. They made me a cake that had a portrait, a cartoon portrait of me on the cake. And then it, when it came time to cut the cake, it was a little uncomfortable because it's like, well, which part of Joshua's head do we cut through first? I said, just go right down the throat, guys. Get it over with. Uh, but hey, it's a little more delicate than that. We actually found a lady who says, I can do it. I can do it. And she walks up. It was so cute. And she takes the knife and very carefully carves around my head and then goes underneath the frosting and scoops it up on a plate and preserves my head. Here you go, you can see my head is preserved. We can go ahead and cut the cake and enjoy the celebration. So after the birthday party, it was time to travel to Ataru, do a little sightseeing, which is a beautiful little city near Sapporo. And there on display, I saw this bear. If you know anything about my song, Woodland Dance, I'm a little bit scared of bears. So here I am enjoying that. And we traveled back to Sapporo that afternoon, evening, did a little sightseeing and saw this fox just out in the wild on the side of the road and stopped and snapped a picture. Here we are with Dr. Go, Ryan and Sarah, doing some sightseeing, skipped some rocks. And uh, Dr. Go was far superior. He was the champion. <laughs> I took second, Ryan took third. Not that it was a competition or anything. The next day it was time to travel back to the Tokyo area, uh, Machida, and prepare for the concert the next day, which was in Yokohama. Now, this concert was hosted by Mr. Atsushi Iguchi. Uh, he's actually the owner of Dulcacraft. Uh, he's an instrument luthier builds guitars and some different things, but also repairs hammered dulcimers and is very active in the acoustic music scene there in Japan. And he arranged everything. All I had to do was show up and play. <laughs> that was easy. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Atsushi. Thank you so much for your hospitality and kindness in arranging that concert. Also, I got to collaborate with uh, the Koto player uh, right here. Her name is Chiako. Now she is a modern uh, koto player, does a lot of different modern stylings and techniques, and it's super to hear. I uh, just was fascinated. I got to meet her at the uh, community arts uh, conference that I played uh, earlier on the tour and asked her to join me on this concert. It was a great collaboration. Thank you, Chieko. Uh, here we are. Uh, Mimi surprised everybody when we played the song The First Snowfall and sprayed some snow. <laughs> Now, a big surprise at this concert was that the director of Mary and the Witch's Flower, Mr. Hiramasa Yonabashi, showed up. Here you can see him to the left. He also directed uh, the Ghibli films, The Secret World of Arietti, and when Marnie was there. Uh, it was just an honor uh, to have him there at the concert. I couldn't believe it. And then to the right in this photo, you will see the composer of Mary and the Witch's Flower, Mr. Takatsugu Muramatsu. He also composed the music for When Marnie Was There and many other films in Japan. He is a, uh, 
a world-renowned composer. Thank you so much uh, for your attendance. Couldn't believe it to have both of these gentlemen there. I was just on cloud nine, and uh, it was magnificent. So that was the last concert in Japan. That uh, was a wonderful way to end things. And it was, the next morning, I got on my bus to travel to the airport and then fly back home. It was, uh, in every way possible, a success, a true memory, one of those... Uh, one of those things that I'll look back on with uh, good feelings and positive uh, memories for the rest of my life. Thank you, uh, Ryan, Sarah, for joining me on this adventure. And I want to thank once again Community Arts Tokyo, Mimi, Go, and Atsushi for helping make this tour possible and arranging all the details for me. It was a wonderful experience. Also to the country of Japan, you showed me kindness and hospitality. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again Thank you so much. And hey, if you're watching this video, please drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you or get in touch with me through my website, joshuamessick.com.